The income statement is one of the key financial statements that you'll need to be able to prepare. In this video, I'll show you how to prepare a basic income statement. We'll be looking at the income statement for a sole trader who runs a trading business. In other words, one that buys goods and sells them on to their customers. Please note that the income statement for a limited company is slightly different to the one that we'll be looking at here. So what is an income statement? It's a calculation of profits. Firstly, gross profit, which is the profit that results from selling goods at a higher price than they were bought for. And secondly, profit for the year, which is the profit that the business makes after deducting all the running costs of the business. It's prepared using a very specific defined format, which you will need to learn and I'll explain it in this video. Some things to remember before we start. Firstly, the income statement always starts with a title in this format. Income statement for, and then the name of the business, in this case, Louise Jones, for the year ended, and then the date which represents the end of the business's financial year. You'll need a number of columns in your income statement. This varies depending on the information you need to include, but it may be up to three columns. Each column should have a pound sign at the top of it, because we don't put pound signs next to the numbers in the actual body of the income statement. The columns are there to show figures that form a calculation. I'll explain how we could do this and how we use the columns as we go along. So let's start with how to calculate gross profit. This is an example of an income statement, and I'll be using real numbers here so that you can see exactly how the calculations work. They're just made up numbers, and I haven't got them from anywhere in particular. They're just simply there to demonstrate the calculations. So we start off with revenue. The revenue is shown in the right hand column. And then we show returns inwards. Returns inwards used to be called sales returns and you might find them referred to in this way. The returns inwards are deducted from the revenue figure to give a calculated figure which is labelled as net revenue. Notice that these figures are all shown in the right hand column. Next we put in the middle column a figure for the inventory at the start of the financial year. This is often called opening inventory. Next we move on to purchases. Notice that these are shown in the left hand column. Purchases has a very specific meaning in accounting. Purchases are goods bought for resale to customers. In other words, the goods in a shop which have been bought and which are then sold on to the customer. Returns outwards used to be called purchase returns. These are the goods that are being returned to a supplier. Carriage inwards is the cost of transporting the purchased goods into the business's premises. Notice that these three figures are all shown in the left hand column. Using these three figures, we now calculate net purchases. The figure for net purchases is shown in the middle column. It's calculated as purchases minus returns outwards plus carriage inwards. Use your calculator to check that you can do this calculation correctly. Next, we show the closing inventory. This is the inventory at the end of the financial year. So you'll notice here that the date of this inventory figure matches the date of the income statement. You'll notice that we now have three figures in the middle column. Opening inventory, net purchases and closing inventory. We now use these three figures to calculate a figure for cost of sales. Cost of sales is also called cost of goods sold and it's calculated as opening inventory plus the net purchases minus the closing inventory. Next we can calculate gross profit. This is calculated as net revenue minus the cost of sales. It's really, really important to be clear about the calculations. So let's just go through these one more time. 
you might find it useful to write out an income statement yourself and clearly label it with how the calculations are done. And you can then refer to that as you move forward and practice some examples. So firstly, we calculate net revenue as revenue minus the returns inwards. Net purchases is calculated as purchases minus returns outwards plus carriage inwards. Cost of sales is calculated as opening inventory plus net purchases minus the closing inventory. And gross profit is calculated as net revenue minus the cost of sales. I hope you're finding this video useful. On our website, subscribers have access to other topic videos like this one, as well as other resources such as worksheets with answers and multiple choice quizzes, which gives you an immediate score and feedback. Let's continue now with our income statement. Having calculated gross profit, the income statement continues by firstly, adding any other income, such as rental income, royalty income, discount received and so on. And then secondly, deducting all of the expenses. These are the day-to-day -day costs of running the business, such as electricity, rent, wages and so on. The resulting profit figure is called profit for the year. This is the final figure in the income statement. So let's continue with our example. I've restarted here from the gross profit figure that we calculated a few moments ago. I've done it like this simply because that's the only space that we have available here. On your page, this will continue on down the page from where you got to before. It's all one statement. So from the gross profit figure, we now add in other income. Discount received is the first example I've shown here. Discount received refers to the cash discount received from suppliers and it's counted as other income. Please note that discount allowed would be shown in the expenses section below and it's important not to get these muddled up. There may be other examples of other income. I've included rental income here, but you might also come across commission income or royalty income. The figures for other income, which notice have been shown in the middle column, are now added together and shown on the right hand side. We now calculate a new total. This is calculated as the gross profit plus the total of the other income. Notice that this total has not been labelled. It doesn't have a name. Next, we list out in the middle column all of our expenses. Here I've used rent and salaries and wages. There are lots of other ex examples of expenses that might be included here, depending on the question, such as electricity, water, insurance, advertising, office expenses and so on. Once all of the expenses have been shown in the middle column, they are added together and the total is shown in the right hand column. The income statement is then finished by calculating the figure for profit for the year. This is calculated as the unlabeled total above, in other words, the £69,400, minus the total expenses. And that completes the income statement. Again, as before, it's really important to be clear about these calculations. So let's go through them one more time. All of the items of other income are added together and the total is shown in the right hand column. The unlabeled total is calculated here, the 69,400, as gross profit plus the total of the other income items. All of the expenses are added together and the total is written in the right hand column. And then finally, to finish the income statement, profit for the year is calculated as the unlabeled total minus the total of all of the expenses. It's really useful to have a clear written out example of an income statement that shows all of these calculations. You can use it going forwards when you do practice examples. And the more you practice preparing income statements,
the more you'll get used to the calculations and you'll learn how to do them. For the exams, you will need to be able to produce an income statement from memory. So you need to know both the format in terms of which items are included where, you need to know which columns to use, and you need to know how to do each of the calculations. Our website has got videos on all of the topics across the whole A-level syllabus. Subscribers to our website have access to all of these videos, which can be accessed by choosing the topic in the menus. Topic videos for all of the different topics within A-level accounting are shown and you have access to these as well as resources such as worksheets which have answers and multiple choice quizzes which give you immediate scores and feedback including an explanation of all of the answers. You can find us on social media and please visit our website www.studytheeasyway.com in order to see some free examples of videos and worksheets so that you can see whether or not you like these before you decide whether to subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it useful.